Hey everybody, how's it going? And um, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about uh, something new that came out in that came out in Unreal Engine 5.5, and it is the audio to animation. I think they call it audio to MetaHuman, uh, whichever you want to call it. It's a great feature that they added for 5.5. It's actually what you're seeing right now is just the audio that I did. This isn't MetaHuman Animator. This isn't Lifelink. It's just the audio that I did to the MetaHuman, and I think it looks awesome and it looks fantastic. So let's take a look at it. Okay, we are here in the level. So let me show you how this goes. We have our sound files here, and all we have to do is right click. Make sure that you have the plugin for the MetaHuman installed. So you can actually do that in the epic launcher if you look for metahuman the metahuman plugin will pop up just install to engine make sure you do 5.5 and you should be good to go once you have done that go to plugins and here look for metahuman and make sure this the metahuman plugin is it's on that way you will get this menu right here so what we need, uh, if you use MetaHuman Animator, you usually create an identity first. You, you use the capture data from your uh, iPhone and then you go into performance. Right now we're going straight into performance. So I click here, let's call it that because uh, that's its name. And over here, it's super easy to do. Just go here instead of depth footage, which is what you get from the iPhone, you go to audio. And in here, you just select your audio. In this case, I'm going to just dump this one in here. There it is. We do need a visualization mesh, and we need to make sure that we are giving it a face control rig for the mesh that we're going to be using. What does that mean? Well, when you import a MetaHuman, it comes with a common folder that has the face control rig board that we're going to use, and that is the one that you want. So we're going to go here and we're going to type face and you see that I have two. One, it says MetaHuman identity template. That is not the one you want. You want this one right here. That is the MetaHuman common face. This is also why you need to download a MetaHuman before you start doing this process. I forgot to mention that in the beginning, but you do need to download a MetaHuman beforehand just so you can get this because you need a mesh as well. So I'm going to select this one right here and I'm also going to select my mesh and it's this one right here, face mesh. It's going to give you this. I always click yes and there he is. It's just uh, the face mesh without any of the grooms because that's unnecessary. Everything else over here, I usually leave at default. I have not changed anything. All right, once we have this, it's just as simple as hitting process. Now, this is going to take a little bit, depending on your machine and the length of your audio. Uh, as you can see, mine was actually pretty quick. So if we go to, let's just go to zero. There, and we hit play. Hey, everybody, how's it going? And uh, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be talking. And once we're done, all we have to do is export animation. I'm going to export it here, the same folder. Uh, this name is fine. And I just click save. You're going to get all this. So I have seen some videos that said that you are supposed to select your mesh. It, it's usually by default, it will select the face archetype. That means the skeleton that's already underneath the MetaHuman that you're using, which is in the common folder. So if you have MetaHumans, it should be the same for all MetaHumans, just the TLDR. Uh, I've seen some people in some videos say that you're supposed to use your mesh. So I I'm supposed to use the face mesh of uh, my MetaHuman. I have found that it makes no difference. Maybe someone in the comments can tell me why some people are doing it, but I personally have found no difference when you're doing this. So all you have to do is create and you're going to get your animation over here. But anything, I can just switch this to this mesh. And again, this is with the face archetype. Now, once we are done with that, all we have to do is grab our MetaHuman and create a sequence. 
Now, all we need to do is delete the control rigs, of course, and we're going to add the animation. And there it is. We just hit play and you can see him animating very uncanny, of course. Now, there are some ways that you can fix uh, that issue. You can do it manually and you can add another animation to help move the head or you can just use mockup data. Now, if you want this to work on the sequence, all you have to do is add the audio track. Click on yes all the time. And we are going to, I think it was called voice. There you go. And if we hit play. Hey everybody, how's it going? And uh, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we... So there you go. Is that easy? Now, another thing that I like to do, let me get rid of this while we work on the rest. To make this look a little bit better is a little bit of a head movement because you can see that he even adds some expression, not a lot, but some expression to the top and to the rest of the face. So it's not just the mouth movement. One of the things that helps this look better is adding a little bit of mocap data. So I have some mocap data here that I captured a while ago. So as you can see, it, it does look a lot better just by adding some mocap data on top of that or by adding any idle animation or anything else around that. Now, what I'm going to do is this uh, mocap data needs some correction. I'll be right back in a second. All right, and this is the result that we got, and that is what you saw in the intro. I actually cleaned up the animation, so if you remember what we had before, this looks a lot better. Cleaning up an animation here in Sequencer is not that difficult. Let me know if you are interested in that, and I'll, I'll make a tutorial on that. It's actually pretty easy. It's not a deep cleanup. Is just making your metahuman not look insane when you import an animation. And yeah, as you can see, looks really believable. I have not done any face mocap whatsoever with this. This is just the audio to animation. Again, uh, audio to metahuman, whatever you want to call it. I think it looks much better than what it did with uh, NVIDIA Omniverse and audio to face. That one was okay, but as you can see, this one also includes expressions for the whole face instead of just being um, the mouth movement. Looks like it's angry. I don't know why it's angry. I wasn't angry when I was recording this, which I think it's hilarious. But again, that is something that can be corrected in, in post, uh, just adjusting with your control rig. I know what some of you are wondering. Well. We have MetaHuman Animator, which is clearly superior to this. Why would you use this? Here is one of those examples of why this is such a big deal. So I know this is just a test run and we're all figuring out things. So this is so nostalgic of 2020 for me because I did a lot of Zoom shows. So hopefully I have my setup okay. I know sound really isn't the big thing right now, so... If you do hear a slight buzz in the background, someone is doing yard work. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I don't blame you for being angry, but I'll have you know, I told my father about your parents right after you told us about them. That wasn't AI. That was a voice actress. She is one of the people that collaborated her voice so I can make this short film happen. And one of the things is some of the people that did the voice acting didn't have the required iPhone, so I couldn't do the MetaHuman animator thing that I was hoping to do. I tried to figure out many ways to do it. It was it was just not looking good. I'm not an actor. I'm not a ADR or voiceover person. I'm an Unreal guy. So this technology came about and it solved that very problem because all of the little uncanny things and quirks that you see, I can fix with Control Rig. And because I have the performances on video so I can match it and do the actual thing that animators do when they have to clean up motion capture. Just utilizing the isolated audio tracks that I got plus the video cleaning up afterwards, 
I can make the short film a uh, reality again and everything is awesome thanks to this new technology that Epic is putting out. The other reason why you want to use this, and this is if you follow my channel for my virtual production content, let's say you need to do pre-visualization. All you have to do is either do the acting among yourselves and use the audio or maybe ask the actors to record voice lines for you and use that audio and you got a near one to one to what you will do in the day of filming. Previous is all about having as close as possible to the day of shooting. So to minimize error and to minimize the things that you have to do in post because filming on set is very, very expensive. So now you can actually have the actors as a metahumans and, and do absolutely everything. Absolutely everything. You can just put a mocap data on top of this. By the way, the motion capture data that I'm using for her right now is the same that I was using for the other character. This is not the motion capture data that I'm going to use in the short film. That's why it looks a little bit off. But it gets the point across. It It's a technology that can help a lot with previs. If you have voice actors in other places, sometimes you cannot do the metahuman animator. This will solve a lot of problems when it comes to that. And yeah, go ahead and use it. Let me know uh, if you have any questions about this. Let me know how you're going to use this. i um, be very interested to see how people are using this. You can post, post stuff on my Discord. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to leave a like, uh, subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment that really goes a long way to helping the channel and the video get out there. Share the video if it was useful to you and you like it. And I'll see you in the next one.